Hey, let's go over what we're doing for our preschool homeschool. Uh, our daughter is four and three months, and our son is two and a half. Um, let's mainly go over what the four and three month old is doing. One of the big things we do every single night is we read to her, or she reads to us now. She's been reading since she was three and a half. Um, we started reading to her when she was one every night, and I think that's why she can read at three and a half, or she's abnormally smart. My son is different. We can't read to him every single night. We try, um, but either being a boy or just being different than her, she um, he has trouble um, letting us read to him. He wants to control the book. Another thing we do is we play uh, a YouTube playlist I created on my YouTube channel. None of the videos are my videos. I just picked out ones that I want the kids listening to or watching when they need to watch, watch videos. A lot of uh, alphabet and phonics and days of the week, months of the year. Uh, I try to pick out the good ones and I know some people don't like kids watching any screen time but on road trips or rainy days if we're going to watch something uh, it's nice to have a, a playlist that they can listen and learn to. I'll even play just the audio when they're playing in the playroom because uh, a lot of them it's singing the alphabet or days of the weeks of songs that they can listen to and start learning the things. Um, you know, for example, my two and a half year old knows the days of the week, most of the months of the year, counting to 20. And not because I taught them, just because we're playing that video playlist in the background or, you know, when they're playing in the playroom. We'll, we'll turn it on. You know, they've heard the songs enough and the videos enough that they don't really watch it. Uh, occasionally they'll look up, but it's playing. It's slowly absorbing into their brain. And it's stuff they need to learn. Uh, look at the computer programs. Um, let's look at Anton first. We usually start with Anton. Um, it's free. And it does a good job. I think it's European based, so a lot of the things might not match up with your state standards. Uh, but here's the subjects over here. It goes up to grade six. Um, we jump around a lot because I've noticed, even when I was teaching uh, back in the day, uh, some kids' brains won't get a concept yet just because it hasn't developed that and made the connections yet. But as they get older and time goes on, something that they couldn't do no matter what. You know, a month ago, suddenly they can do quite easily. What am I in? Um, but uh, same thing with my daughter. Uh, something she couldn't do just a couple of weeks ago, she's now able to do. Subtraction is a great example. Um, this is Anton. We jump around depending on what she's able to comprehend at that time. If she struggles too much and is, isn't just going to get it. Uh, for example, flat and solid, we started but we stopped. Um, so, you know, take it how it is. You know, we tried to get mastery on everything with the little crown, um, but we stopped after that because we were taking too long on each one of those. And normally in a day we would have done all of that. So that's Anton, uh, free program, worth getting. Um, let's do one of my favorites. She enjoys this one too. This is a great example of where at one point her mind just wouldn't remember any of these. We struggled and we stopped doing it for a little bit or I would do it with her just for fun. And now um, she does it independently. You know, we'll just start it and she'll do it on her own. This one's free at first, but um, we bought it because we wanted the states of the United States. I think it comes free with the world map. Uh, this is called, let me look, show you that. It's called Study GE. Um, but it's a little broken right now. Hopefully he'll fix it here soon. I know he is updating things. So he'll update uh, other parts of the app and he just updated the map on the United States, put a newer map up. So I think he's trying to fix it, but we can't do level progression right now. So we're stuck at 10 questions. She, she's unlocked a lot more states than 10. So it randomly picks 10 for her to be quizzed on. And it's pretty nice because kid has to be able to read or you can read it to them. 
uh, but they click on what the answer is, you confirm and correct. And she gets 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 every single time on the states she's unlocked, so I'm pretty impressed by it. Uh, I've always liked geography, so she likes geography, and I don't want to do this whole thing. So let's see how we back out of here. But um, she does good, and it's learning geography. I don't know how to get out of this. I wanted to show you some of the other maps that you can buy. Um, we bought the full version. I don't know why we can't get to it. Um, so we have all of these unlocked. We just need to download them. I think the free version just has the world maps. But you know, originally I wanted to do these oceans because she talks about going to the beach, and then I, it's important to know the rivers. Um, but we decided to start with the United States because there's only 50 of them. And you can see 98 waters, 230 countries, 243 rivers. It can get a little overwhelming for a four-year-old. So we'll start with states, and she's got about half of them done. So that's called Study GE. Let's get out of it. Um, let's see if I can go to App Info so you can see the information of it. There it is, Study GE. Let me show you Anton too. So you can see the icon and find it easily. What's next? We'll do Khan Academy. This is a good one. Uh, the two and a half year old uh, son does this one also. So this one's great as soon as they're able to start using a computer. She usually does Ford. <laughs> Ford's coming in wanting to play games now. I'm just showing them right now, Ford. Um, so this is different levels. We'll pick this one so she can show you math. But Ford's going to start crying here in a second because he wants to play. Can we go play with Summer? Alright, so I didn't want to get into that. But Khan Academy's free. I'm not playing games, buddy. Um, and it's good. It definitely helps them learn stuff and I can't get out of it now. Um, let's go out and show you what the screen looks like for it. So Khan Kids. It's a free app and it's good she's kind of starting to outgrow most of the uh, activities on it so we have moved up and downloaded regular Khan Academy uh, she is having trouble with this one though so it's a great example of where she's just not quite ready for it but it does do some of the basic addition and subtraction things so she can work on and if we can't do a new activity well you know we can always repractice some of the other activities like add within five um, or add within ten so there's all kinds of subjects and it's pretty good um, but it's mainly geared for higher level kids uh, they're probably still developing a lot of the elementary school level stuff but it's still worth downloading especially since it's free let me see if we can close out of all this and so let's look at what the app looks like. So Khan Academy, it's pretty good. Let's get out of that. This is what we're really doing for math is this one. I don't even know what this one's called. We'll have to pull up the app info when we're done. This is another free one. It's nice because there aren't any really ads or anything to bog it down. We do addition practice and she's on intermediate level. <laughs> we'll play games a little bit for you. The only complaint I have is sometimes there's a whole lot of zero ones. Um, this one doesn't, which is nice. We use blocks and number lines. She's getting really good at using the number lines and fast. And I like to start them off with blocks because they can understand that better. Let me go back. So we do two screens of the addition. We're going to have to listen to Ford say games too because he loves playing these games. I can't back out of this. Come on. Oh, we do subtraction. She's beginner level on that. And you can see, pretty easy. I really have to watch her though because she's a cheater on this. Um, she'll just start dragging numbers up sometimes until she gets the right answer. 
which is really frustrating to watch her do, but you know, I guess that's good for being clever and that she's trying to cheat her way through it. And so, you know, I like to watch them do this activity. All right, you guys are gonna have to go outside and play. Go on out and play, you're interrupting me. So, let's close out of this and see what it's called. It's pretty embarrassing. I don't know what it's even called. There it is, Math Kids. Mommy. Mommy. Okay, so that's one of the math programs we do. The other one is this one. Me first. I really like this one. I'll show you why here in a second. Math Games. There's a little symbol for it right at the top. So, let's open it up. Might show sideways this entire time because I'm not going to flip this around and try to get it the right way. But we usually do a screen of math. We'll do add three, level three. What I like about this one is, you know, two plus one, she has to write it in this little block box here. And we discovered some of the numbers she couldn't write. So that was a great chance for us to learn how to write all the numbers. So you can see if she doesn't write it nice, it says, well, <laughs> let's try if she does a weird one. Yeah, see, so if she doesn't write it nice, it can't tell what it is. And so she does a full screen on that. Oh, that was awful. But that's our, you can see it fills up. So we do a full activity of that. Let me back out. Give up later. I know, Ford, you can't play games right now. We're doing a video. Uh, we also do one of the subtraction ones. Uh, and again, it's nice. She can have to write it in there. Boy, I gotta work on my handwriting. And she can hit check. So that's nice. There's no guessing involved. You have to do the math and uh, write it in there. Alright, so let's get out of that. Uh, so it's called Math Games. Let's move on. Let's see. The typing one we just started a few weeks ago. Another free app, which is nice. You can see my son in the background hiding in the curtains. Alright, so this is nice because it teaches me the keyboards. <laughs> have to, Ford, you're going to have to leave, buddy. The only thing I don't like it is it repeats. There's not enough activities learning just the left hand, um, mixing up the letters better. And so, you know, it, it could be improved, but for a free app, it does get them familiar with the keyboard. Uh, I don't know how to get out of this main menu. Here we go. So we've got the home row one is your left hand home row, home row two is your right hand, and home row three is both your hands. And you can see we've only gotten to home row three and she really struggles with that. She's doing pretty good with the left and right hands by themselves, but combining them, she just needs to take practice with it. So she'll get it eventually and then we'll move on. But this, and I looked a while to try to find a good typing app, is called animal typing. It's a whole free app. I don't know what you get for paying or subscribing. Maybe more activities. So maybe at some point I'll look into that. So what else we got? Uh, okay, let's go to Hooked on Phonics. When my wife was a kid. She played on Hooked, and Phonic, Hooked on Phonics in her classroom, so that's why she really wanted to try this one. Uh, this is one that can be done with a two-year-old also. My son can do this, but you just have to sit with him. It's a paid monthly subscription and fairly expensive. Uh, but they do have a lot of different activities. Um, you know, I've never been a fan of word searches. I don't know quite what people learn from word searches. But here's a couple of the different activities. Is it worth paying for? Maybe. I I don't know, to be honest with you. So she's making the word junk here. This is another one where I have to watch her and make sure she doesn't cheat, because it'll just tap them until she gets the right 
letters. I want me to spell the word gift, I think. Gift. You made it. It's another thing that teaches her phonics, so I'm not too worried about it, and I don't think it's too expensive per month. But it is paid, and is it worth the pay? Oh, I'm on the fence on it. Sometimes I think it's pretty good. They also mail you a bunch of stuff too, which is nice. Um, little activity books and things. So maybe for the activity books plus this, it's worth it. You'd have to try it yourself to be sure, because I really am on the fence. Uh, we're going to keep doing it, because we have it, and she's used to doing it. It's part of our routine, and I really like getting kids into a routine. So that's hooked on phonics. Let me clear some of this stuff out. That's what the app looks like. Again, it is paid for. Um, I think all we have left on this is ABC Mouse. This is a paid program, also uh, $60 a year, I believe. We've paid for a year, and I don't think we'll renew it. I honestly am not a fan of this program and I'll show you why. One, it's really slow. Uh, their server I think is slow because we can do it on the computer and it'll still have connection issues where things will crash. If you can get it working, um, there are a few good activities, but at her level uh, and we worked all the way up through halfway through first grade level, and then I reset her because it the math in it jumped up incredibly. It went from almost no math all through the kindergarten levels and preschool levels, hit first grade, and it jumped up to adding within like 50. It was just big numbers, double digit numbers, where a bunch of these should have been simple addition practice things, like two plus one. You know, real simple stuff and work their way up. They just jumped up immediately, so quick, so fast, there was no doing it anymore. Um, any of the reading stuff she could do easily. Oh. But so much of this program is drawing. Out. Um, half, I would, I would say about half Out. the activities are going to be drawing, Red. coloring, not drawing, but coloring these things, um, all the way up even through first grade as far as we could get before it just jumped up on difficulty way too fast. So way too much coloring, um, way too many, let's go back one, that's another coloring, let's go back one, that reads a book, that doesn't bother me follow along reading. Another book reading one. Uh, I think that was another book reading one possibly. Painting, I don't know what that is, some type of game. That was a puzzle. And that's the other thing, you know, a lot of just dragging puzzle pieces over. It was just, sometimes it feels like half of the activities are coloring, we're doing puzzles when they should have added a lot more basic math uh, so that when they hit the first grade level and start doing double digits or big numbers they have some background in addition uh, maybe some subtraction um, I don't know so as of now we talked about it we got a you know four five more months left of this program but after that uh, I don't think we'll renew it unless there's some changes or we get to the first grade level again for the second time and she's then able to make some connections and we can see what the first and second grade level is. But as a preschool, homeschool, it's not worth the money. Uh, I'm not impressed by it at all. Uh, there are games she likes playing and things like that, but you know, there's free games she could play and I don't really like them playing games on the laptop too much, so we don't really want to encourage games anyway. And a lot of the games aren't necessarily learning games, they're like playing with hamsters and making hamster houses. But I know there's there's learning and play too, but 
So that's A, B, C, A, mouse. And then we have her draw, well not draw, but write her uh, name and first and last, and then all the family members' names uh, where we trace letters to work on our handwriting. And so that's the programs we use. I'd love suggestions on what programs you use and have found um, helpful. Um, I'll look at either free or paid. If it's a good program, I think spending some money on your kids is a good idea. Um, but the biggest thing I think that got her so good was reading to them every night. Reading at, uh, you know, she can read at first, second grade level and she's four years old and has been reading since three and a half. Now maybe she's just uh, on the top end of the bell curve, but uh, something's going on. So give me comments, suggestions, but that's what we're doing. Hope it helps. Thanks.